This tutorial covers character design, animation, line art, shading, backgrounds, and compositing in the Castlevania style. The animated series, not the games. I'm teaching the style, not specific animation programs. You can adapt these techniques to the software you use. My current setup is on screen. Normally, Scribble Kibble style tutorials are ones you could reasonably do by yourself without taking forever. Castlevania is much more complex. I did my best with mimicking this style, but there are a few things that make it time consuming for a solo artist, especially one who hasn't drawn anime in 10 years. Let's start with character design. Today I'm using Daria Cohen's vampire character, Duke. Overall, the style you want to try to draw your character in is going to be a mix between anime and western superhero comic book. Most Castlevania characters fit into one of two types. Let's call them pretty and intense. A pretty character looks more like what you'd expect from anime with softer facial curves. They tend to look younger. An intense character has hard edges and lots of facial definition. They tend to look older. Some characters are a mix of both pretty and intense. As far as face proportions, Isaac here gives a good example of what to expect. Structure leans toward realism rather than cartoon. Real ears, real nose. For pretty characters, a less defined rectangularish nose is also common. Eyes are far more realistically proportioned than the average anime, although some characters, usually females, have big eyes with large irises. All characters have lower eyelashes. This is a hallmark of the Castlevania style. It's required. Lined upper eyelid, visible tear duct on the inner side only, iris outline thins and disappears at the bottom, small pupil, singular eye shine. The way the iris is shaded and detailed varies a lot, but in general it's either a simple half crescent or aims to mimic the scritchy iris patterning. All mouths have upper and lower lip lines, regardless of the character's sex. On close-up shots, shadows profile individual teeth, from far away, teeth are a unified white strip. You can do whatever you want for clothes and hair. The show aims to make those things believable, attuned to a medieval, magical fantasy time period. On to animation tips for Castlevania style. Lip sync features distinct but limited mouth shapes, often not much more than closed, open, and a ooh-oh shape. It's common for bottom teeth to be visible when speaking. When talking, the chin is sometimes animated, sometimes not, depending on what the animators had time for. The only instance you have to animate the chin is on a side view. During speech, topmost beard lines often move, even if the rest of the chin and beard are static. Character animation tends to be limited. There are a lot of still image dialogue shots with cameras, panning, and only an occasional movement. This is necessary to fit the detailed art style into a believable budget, plus it saves resources for the action sequences. If you're planning to animate an action sequence by yourself, expect to invest many hours. <laughs> I'd suggest studying Spencer Wan's sequences. The colors are well organized and show exactly all of the different things you need to be keeping track of, especially if you're dealing with special effects. Otherwise, if you're sticking to simpler animations, the difficult part is tight spacing means you have to be precise with animating shadows so they don't wobble around. I find roughing first helps me a lot. Anything to get poses and proportions and directions figured out and to check my arcs and timing before I draw anything. Once you've got your animation all figured out, the next step is the line art. Castlevania line art uses a thin, uniform line with rounded ends. On occasion, particularly during season one, there are shots with some variation in the line thickness, so if you prefer that, aim for a pencil setting between the two extremes. This animation style has three tone shading. That is expensive. Even one layer of shading significantly increases animating hours. However, shading is a key aspect of the Castlevania style. A second layer of cell shading adds noticeable depth to the artwork. Compare with, and without. Depending on the lighting situation, it might help you to think of what you're doing as adding a highlight and a shadow rather than dealing with two shadows. Fill the character with shade one, erase to get the highlight, and then shade with shade two. The third, black shadow, uses the same color as the line art. It most often goes under the chin to help define the head from neck. Third black shadow is also used sparingly for extreme dark inside ears, nostrils, belly button, armpit, under the nose, and to shade the lower lip. Castlevania's high contrast shadows are very dark compared to the typical 2D animation, even outdoors during the daytime. This gives the art lots of depth, 
but it will make any lack of understanding of the human figure rather obvious, since it's shades that define it so clearly in the show. Then you can just flat color everything. A very subtle soft brush is sometimes painted onto each frame for skin tone. You can see the effect on this screenshot. Soft shade usually goes on the nose bridge, around the eyes, and on the bottom lip. The same effect is used here to put the blush on Lenore's cheeks. In my example, I skipped this step because I spent way too much time drawing it to begin with. <laughs> that completes the character animation. Backgrounds follow a painterly style with no drawn outlines. Learning to digitally paint like this is a whole separate skill set. Personally, I'm used to dealing with lines, so I drew a sketch I could paint on top of. Since I knew the backgrounds were going to be shadowed and blurred out, I took only an hour here. Mixer brushes and blending tools are your friends. Block all of the hard colors in first, then blend it, and then add any soft light, shadow, and reflections. Combine the character art and the background in your compositing software. The goal now is to pack on all of the effects to make these two look like a part of the same setting. Castlevania uses three key effects a lot. Tint lighting, gradient shade, and focus blur. Tints are a solid color or varied color layer set to different blend modes. Use this effect to create environment lighting, say if you've got cold blue magic or warm hearth fire. In the same vein, you can use a faded shape to make glows, as if lighting is brighter or darker in one spot than the other. Because so much of Castlevania takes place in the dark, light is very important, probably the most important effect, so you can see me playing around with the shapes to try and figure out what I want to do for light. Gradient shades are applied to characters or the entire shot. They usually start dark at the bottom of the character and fade up to nothing. Otherwise, the gradient direction depends on the light source. Gradient shading just gives extra depth to what would otherwise be solid cell shade. Focus blur softens out backgrounds. Castlevania frequently uses blurs to focus the viewer's attention on specific elements, usually the face. Notice how quickly everything past the face blurs out in most close-ups. Since I animated my example in 4K, I blurred the entire thing a little bit. It's just too sharp otherwise to fit the style. <sighs> Normally I can nail a style, but honestly I'm just not skilled enough to recreate something that's good. Uh, especially every single aspect of it. That's it's a little bit unrealistic. <laughs> There's reasons artists begin specializing in background art or character animation or some specific thing. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this crazy tutorial. If you want to try a different animation style, I've linked this tutorial series in a playlist below.